Hi, everyone. My name is Viola Gauci. Thanks, Brandon. Um, I'm here on behalf of SolveRx. I work for Google. So um, thanks, everyone, for being here. We're, we're very excited. SolveRx, um, as Ryan mentioned, we met AAAS on that magnificent day on, uh, on our event at the Hill. So we're really excited to be here. And it's been a great partnership with AAAS. They help us with our, to vet the moonshot proposals that we receive on the website. Um, we get to come to these awesome events and meet you all. So it's, it's a, a remarkable association to be working with. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for your hard work. And we wouldn't be here without you. SolveRx has grown a lot over the past few years. We're now in 22 countries. Uh, we've got around 5,000 individuals uh, in all these countries and around 50 events every year. So I'll be telling you more about that in a bit. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself because I'm so excited. So I'm going to be showing you a video first. Um, and then I'll tell you more about how we all run. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Throughout all of history, we have seen brave women and men from every corner of the planet push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Everyone from George Washington Carver and Nikola Tesla to Grace Hopper and the Code Breakers at Bletchley Park. These ordinary heroes challenged the status quo with their extraordinary ideas and changed the world forever. We call these audacious pursuits moonshots. A moonshot is where there's a clearly defined problem, some radical proposal for how to fix the problem, and the scientific reason to believe it's not completely crazy to try to go do it. We created SolveRx to bring people together around moonshots. We are a community of scientists, inventors, engineers, artists, thinkers, doers, the young, the wise, men and women from every background across every geography, connected by a shared optimism that science and technology can cause radically positive things to happen in the world. Add the silica right at the very beginning to store and transport the vaccines without requiring refrigeration. The things we fight wars over are literally in near infinite quantities in our solar system. You can take all 270,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel and turn it into enough electricity to power the entire world for 72 years. We're going to create optimally nutritious plants over the next three to five years to improve the nutrition of an entire continent. I know that one day I will wake up and I will see this picture out of my window. Part of bringing together this community is not only have this stage so that extraordinary people can tell us amazing proposals that they have for us in this world, but how can we then help them? It will take every one of us contributing the best of our talents to create the kind of positive change we want to see in our world. We encourage you to join us, to be a part of what is unfolding here, and to find ways to contribute. Get involved in the process of taking moonshots and trying to make the world radically better as fast as possible. We are the ones we've been waiting for. So, this big diagram. This is our definition of a moonshot. Everyone tells us, oh, I have a moonshot. I've got this great idea. We're like, oh, hold on a moment. Let's tell you what our definition is first, and then you tell me if it's a, it's a moonshot. And it's a pretty simple explanation. There are three elements. Um, my job is to find people who are working on stuff like this. So people who are working on really big problems, problems that are facing humanity. Um, there are so many different fields, health, um, water, there's food, there's, there's energy. I find people who are working across all these different fields and doing really exciting stuff. Uh, they're working on unique solutions, so it's a different take um, than everyone, than anyone else, or somewhat the same, pr uh, different perspective on somewhat existing technology. But then there's a the break technology part, so um, it has the, the, the solution has to be deeply rooted in science and technology for it to be a moonshot. So we look for projects like these. We look for people who are um, working on something like this, but not 
think of the Elon Musk of 10 years ago, you know, someone who is struggling with something, someone who hasn't yet figured out exactly how to, how to solve it, how to get it out there, and how, how, to, how to make it uh, successful. So th they have this tiny little problem that they need to solve for it to become successful. And that's why we invite them to our events. Um, we bring them in touch with people like you, um, a very curated audience. Uh, we get people from different fields. So people from science and technology, but also as some people here are from policy, from other different um, sciences, etc. So in these events, we work on what we call the X. So as much as possible, so this is the X. As much as possible, you saw the intersection between the, in the Venn diagram. Um, we, we like to get um, people to discuss the sex and, and you will see that in the moonshot session you'll also have a challenge that you will be working on. So today won't just be people speaking to you, but you will also get to contribute your own um, thoughts and, and uh, contributions to the, to the problem itself. You'll know, for example, um, I'm sure, has everyone here heard of Google X? So I'll give you a little history here of how Solve4 X was formed. So we were formed in tw um, 2012 out of Google X, um, we have these amazing technologies within Google. We work on the autonomous vehicles um, that Kristen mentioned earlier, for example, uh, the, the smart contact lens that measures diabetes levels, but also Project Loon, which gives internet access to, to areas that don't have, um, that aren't lucky as, as, as lucky as us to have internet in, in each and every corner of the world. And these are moonshots. This is, these are what we call moonshots because let me give an example of the self-driving car. Um, so car accidents are the leading cause of death uh, in the 4 to 34 age group. So around 90% of all car accidents, um, excuse me, 90% of all, of all exactly car accidents are caused by human error. So what we did at Google X is to understand, you know, how can we build um, autonomous vehicles so that we eliminate or reduce as much as possible that 90%. And the technology behind that is, of course, there's, there's really um, highly sensitive sensors that make sure that the car can see at a 360 degree angle and uh, make it as effective and hopefully more effective than human, than human controlled vehicles. So that's, that's an example of a moonshot. And here you have, of course, a smart contact lens. The problem is diabetes. Diabetes is also a major um, killer, unfortunately, in the States and globally. Um, so if you had constant assessment of your diabetic levels, then it would really help you um, manage your diabetes, etc. And Project Loon as well, the problem being their uh, internet access. So what we did was we thought, okay, within Google, we have the resources and we have the talent to, to solve really big problems. We want to do this, but what about all the other people out there who have really big solutions to these problems. What can we do for them? Because just because we are a big company and, and, uh, and we have the resources to work on these problems, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't pay attention to other, other, other people who are working outside of Google, right? We should find a way to help these people too. So that is why Software X was born, trying to find out how we can help these people who are working on the X. And I'd like to introduce you to a few of these people. Um, this is Isel. Um, actually, let me let her introduce herself and then I'll tell you a little more about her. When I got into science, I found that I was really excited every time when I was doing an experiment. Even though a lot of the times I knew what kind of data it's going to be, what I really liked about science was the ability of not only being able to answer the questions, but actually to pose the right questions. After the birth of my daughter, I took her to the doctor to be vaccinated. The doctor took out the vaccine out of the fridge and um, was going to administer it. And I naively thought, maybe we need to warm it up. And he said, no, 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 we don't warm it up because um, if you warm it up, it would denature. And I thought, okay, I, I know nothing about vaccines. So I started searching and I found out that uh, indeed vaccines have to be stored uh, at, in refrigerators all the time. That's when I thought maybe I can use silicon to cage them so that they would not unfold. The biggest push was when I spoke to one of the professors at Bath. 
and he just pushed me into the lab and said, okay, tell me what you need. Do you need this, this, or do you need to talk to, to people? And he sent me to other collaborators around, and that was a big push which really started me on this. When I first started doing the experiments, it was really not working at all. And every time it felt like a failure because something would not work. So every time we were thinking, yes, we, it didn't work, but it's okay because we can, we can try again. We have quite a good amount of um, silica with the protein, so, and, and we can coat almost 90% almost of the protein, which is a really good result. In the beginning, I was just interested in the problem, but thinking about how it can help so many millions of people around the world, it sort of came later after I found out that the problem is so big. It's an amazing time to be in chemistry at the moment because we have the whole periodic table to play with, so we have so many elements to play with, and we can just mix and match them and see what will come up. We've tried to heat it to 100 centigrade, and the protein was fine after that. That's, that's amazing. There's so much knowledge we have in chemistry which we can use for making interesting things and making those things to help so many people around the world. What I really love about Isel's story is how she knew nothing about vaccines. Um, as she said, she went to the doctor and she asked the doctor, should you heat that up, right? She, she really didn't know that vaccines can the nature with heat. But she decided to be bothered by this. She decided to, when she realized how many kids were dying all around the world from this, and she realized it could have been her own daughter in a different world, where she born in a different country, she decided to do something about it. And I have such deep respect and admiration for people like Isel, and we have another 100 pioneers like her on our platform. And this is why I get up of, you know, this is what makes me get out of bed every morning, you know, knowing that I can help these people. So another person like Isel is Ido. Um, he is he's also working on, on something amazing. So these are nanorobots. Um, that perform non-invasive surgery, and we'll be hearing about nanorobotics today as well. Um, and as I mentioned, if you want to check out our website, there's, we have another 100 projects, or 100 or so projects on our website. It's solforex.com if you want to take a look. Um, and uh, these are all people who are at this stage of, of their moon, they're working on their moonshot, and they are going, these are the different fields that we have all the moonshots in, and um, there are different stages of their moonshot life cycle. So you can take a look at that and see all the different projects. But today we're going to be hearing from, I'm sorry, I keep on doing this, here. Today we're going to be hearing from two amazing individuals, actually three amazing individuals, but two amazing projects. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll Maybe I should talk a little bit about how the session is going to run so that you can understand a little more about why you're split up in groups. So we're going to be having two sessions. Um, the first talk will be by Sarah over here, and then we're going to have another talk by Sean and Jesse. So the two talks will run for around 10, 15 minutes, and you will hear these talks. And then afterwards, you'll be split into groups, and you'll be able to discuss a challenge that was posed by um, each speaker. So the challenge that you will get <coughs> Um, will be about this, any, so there are different challenges that these, are, that these people are facing at the moment, so you will have a chance to help them out uh, with their projects. And there's a very specific, this is, co this is called the Moonshot Brainstorm. It's a concept that we borrowed from improv. And the way that you'll be running this is you'll have two thirds of the time where you'll be thinking, yes and. So how can we help these people? What are the connections we can make? Um, how can, you know, is, do any bells, are any bells ringing? Can I think of any technology that might, you know, help this project go further? So if anyone in the group goes, no, no, I don't think that makes sense, in the first, in the first two thirds of the time, feel free to tell them, hey, you know, slow down, 
we're in the yes and session. So in the yes and part of the session, really try to think positive, be open about different ideas that come across the group, and make sure everyone in the group is contributing. Be that person who, if you see that two people in your group are you know, standing a little back and, and, and holding their thoughts, make sure that you ask them what they're thinking, because it's really the diversity of the people that are in the team that make, that make the magic happen. You'll see that a few of you will know about the topic more than others, a few of you will be clueless, and that's perfectly fine, that's, that's why we're here. Um, you'll find that some people who are actually clueless at the beginning come up with the best ideas because they have never thought about this and, and they really think out of the box when it comes to these ideas. And then for one third of the time, you'll be thinking yes but. So okay, does the math check out? Is, is there something that maybe, is there a gap that maybe the pioneer, we call these speakers pioneers, that maybe the pioneer hasn't, hasn't thought about yet? Is, is there something else? Um, that may be a gap of why would this would not potentially work. Um, have you read of any papers before that were trying to tackle the same issues and they failed for a certain reason? Maybe you want to bring that up so that you make sure that the, that the project owners consider that before they move any further. So two thirds yes and, one third yes but. You'll have around 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes to go through this and we'll be displaying the, the groups again. Um, there is only one rule, so except for the yes and the yes but, there's only one rule. Anything that you say in groups is um, more, feel free to say whatever, as, as, as Brandon mentioned earlier, you won't be filmed, so don't worry, nothing, no matter what you say, nothing is stupid. Uh, make sure that you, know, you can feel free um, to say whatever is on your mind. Um, you can tweet about this event. Feel free to go ahead and tweet about what the speakers say on stage. Um, these are our Twitter channels. Ha our hashtag is SolveForX. But please do not tweet about what is being said in the brainstorming sessions um, or who said it. So that's, that's the only rule except for, you know, be positive and two-thirds yes and, and one-third yes but. Um, feel free to assign a leader or a representative at the beginning of the session and someone else who can take notes because what we do afterwards is you'll come back after those 50 minutes, after 40 to 50 minutes, and you'll be relating your, um, your two to three main ideas. So you'll have two minutes for that representative to get up and tell us what you're thinking about and you'll be telling your speaker what you came up with in the session. So giving back the ideas that you came up with during the session. Um, we'll also be passing on all the papers or all the flip charts that you draw on to the speaker, but don't worry about being you know, tight, neat and tidy. Draw, sketch, whatever you like, um, and then just we'll pass it on later for the, for the speaker to use.